Hey guys, it's Biggs. Welcome back. Now in part one, we got to see all those absolutely beautiful birds. In part two, today, Danae's going to take us on a full tour where we got to see them in the wild. I got my binoculars. You guys ready? Let's go. Being able to get out in the field with my guide Danae and seeing these majestic creatures in the wild as nature in tandem is truly majestic. Okay, so um, you can pull out a great horned owl drawer here. So um, this is a really common species in Saskatchewan. You'll see them often just kind of along roadsides. Unfortunately, they're one of the species that gets hit by cars most often. Uh, one of the things I think is really cool about them is just their color variability. So these are all female great horned owls that were all collected um, very close in time, very close in space. And you can see that, you know, some of them are very red, some of them are very gray. Um, How do you know they're female? Short, like short of doing the dissections and whatnot, but is there an external diagnostic trait that tells them that they're female? Uh, the females are sometimes a little bit bigger, but okay. it's, it's hard to know without actually having a male and female beside each other. Like if you have a nesting pair, yeah. you might see, okay, the bigger one is going to be the female. But um, unfortunately for these guys, we do have to open them up to actually see if they're male and female and actually look at the gonads, which are up inside of the body. They're not yeah. convenient like mammals with, you know, external testes or anything yeah. like that. So these are northern flickers. This is another really common species in Saskatchewan. Um, one thing I think that is really cool is that a lot of these specimens are actually donated by individuals. Um, so because these guys are so common, they often run into people's windows in the city and people will um, collect the carcass and then they can bring it to us at the museum. And their name gets put on the collection label and kind of goes into posterity. Do you watch Monty Python? Do you know who that is? I do. Do you yes, remember the absolutely. bring out your dead? Bring out your dead. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Not many places you can take dead <laughs> things to willingly, but you can for the Royal Museum of Saskatchewan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are we looking at next, Danae? All right, so these are burrowing owls. Um, unfortunately, they don't always make the nicest study skins, but uh, this is a really interesting species to me because this is what I did my, um, my honors on. So these guys travel down to Florida in the winter. Smart bird. Um, yeah, or actually <laughs> as far as Mexico, there's actually a Florida population that doesn't migrate. But burrowing owls in Saskatchewan or in Canada in general are in decline. So we're really interested in their migration patterns um, and see what they're doing in Mexico that might stop them from coming back, which would affect our populations. Up I here. can tell you there's lots of reasons to prevent me from coming back if I, if I <laughs> migrated to Florida or Mexico. Absolutely. <laughs> these are peregrine falcons. Uh, one of the neat things about these guys is some of them do have leg bands and that's really interesting because we get in a bird with a leg band we can often track it back to you know exactly where it was born um, or and try and get an age on it and find out you know what was its life story before it came here and got its second life in the museum so these guys are uh, bald eagles uh, americans will love this drawer <laughs> very american uh, one of the cool things i think about these guys is a lot of people don't realize they don't get their white head until they're about five or six years old and so the juveniles are often mistaken for golden eagles. And that whole cabinet is all bald eagles. All bald eagles, yeah. We won't tell the Americans that. <laughs> this Canadian province, the province of Saskatchewan, which habitats are primarily prairie and scrubland, hosts an incredible diversity of bird species. 437 documented species call this prairie city or this prairie province home at one point in time throughout the year. Many species migrate south when the harsh winters come. and Many species stay throughout all four seasons. But regardless, if watching birds is a passion of yours, Saskatchewan, Canada is definitely a place to check off on your bucket list. And looking at them here in the Royal Saskatchewan Museum, in one way, is easier. No need for fancy camera equipment with extremely long lenses, patience, Quiet. Here you can see all these animals up close and personal and all these beautiful mounts. So 
these are uh, the golden eagles, so they're a little bit bigger than the bald eagles. Uh, really, a really impressive bird. But you can see why they would, you know, uh, perhaps get confused with a juvenile uh, bald eagle just because their heads are dark, just like a juvenile bald eagle. Yeah, that's a large bird. Prepared as study skins. Um, kind of a bird on a stick. Um, a lot of people think that the <laughs> stick is to pick them up by, but it's actually to protect the tail feathers so that they can't get jammed into the end of the drawer. Uh, when you pick up a specimen, you want to support it the whole way around. Just I would have thought the stick would have been so you could put it in the chocolate fountain. <laughs> so these guys are ospreys. Uh, one of the cool things about them, they're often called fish hawks. And if you zoom in on the feet there, you can see they're really, really spiky. That helps oh, yeah. them hold on to fish better. Very cool. These guys are turkey vultures, uh, everyone's favorite bird for their uh, warty faces and the fact that they urinate on their legs to keep cool and Well, I do that too. You, you don't do that? You don't do that? <laughs> Maybe I'll try it next time. <laughs> you said interesting facts. I don't know if that's an interesting fact. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what your definition of interesting is. There are swans. Um, the trumpeter swan which is this first guy here. Is... <laughs> they don't really fit in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Just about, hey. These are uh, Canada's biggest bird by weight, so these are our biggest skins. Unfortunately, they take Look up a the lot of Look at the size of the, the feet on this thing. It's massive. It's enormous. This one shouldn't have a, a little stick. This one should have a two by four. <laughs> so here we have some uh, hummingbirds. So in Saskatchewan, um, we have ruby-throated hummingbirds. It's just the males that have those ruby throats, but it's really, really cool because it actually is iridescent. I don't know if you can oh, see yeah. that there, where it goes from black to bright red. Yep. Just gorgeous. That's the only species that's native? Yes. Okay. We do occasionally see other ones. Uh, the rufous hummingbird and this hummingbird might pass through, but it, it, typically it's just... We used to have these at the cottage the all the time. Oh, right on. They're really, really cool to see them visit flowers. Yeah. Uh, one of the cool things about... Uh, Birds is they can see the color red, whereas insects can't. So if you have red flowers, they're actually trying to attract pollination by birds. And that's probably why for all hummingbird feeders, we people used to be told to add red food coloring. Now we're told exactly. that that's actually detrimental to the birds. Absolutely. All right, some of the uh, more colorful birds in Saskatchewan are the warblers. Um, so here we have morning warblers, uh, Canada warblers, um, common yellow throats, uh, They're all yellow so far. Mm, so well, these guys here, these are tanagers. Get the nice red. These guys are um, not is that quite as common. Male, here. female, or, or is it like they're not sexually dimorphic? Uh, these are western tanagers, and these are scarlet tanagers, different okay. species. Yeah. Um, Rose-breasted grosby. Get the nice red. So the males are the colorful ones. Females are less colorful. Let's see, you get some different colors here. So here's some blues. Well, you're getting all These the gambit. Indigo buntings. Uh, I don't think the cardinal's native. We don't see cardinals very often, <laughs> but they are here occasionally. This guy was actually collected at Craven, Saskatchewan. Oh, that's just north of here, yeah? Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, what else do we have here? Now, you mentioned earlier, and it was we didn't talk about it yet, but you mentioned like when you said the word collected. Mm -hmm. the, the museum is not going out. You mentioned that you guys don't actively go right. out and collect anything. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that was done historically, but these days um, birds are very protected. We would need permits to go out and we wouldn't really have any reason to. So everything that we get in the collection is donated either by uh, conservation officers or members of the public might bring them to us or they might even come to us through uh, wildlife rescues. Yeah. The bird doesn't survive, it can come here and get its second life. And the public bringing you a bird, it's more like it's an animal that's hit a window or a car or something like that. It's like yes, the, there's exactly. nobody allowed legally to go out and harvest any of these birds exactly. whatsoever. Exactly. We call it salvaging, yeah. Correct. Oh, and as we save the best for last, the perennial favorites. All our American friends will absolutely love this bird. This is the, what do you call that? Tuna from the sky. What do you want to call that? The Canada goose. Loves all your golf courses. Super pleasant bird. Well, I truly cannot thank Danae and the Royal Saskatchewan Museum for allowing us to come in and shoot this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was sure fun to see. I may not be the bird lover everybody wants me to be, but they still are fascinating creatures. Thanks for watching, my friends. Take care.